be better. Yeah. Let's get back to here again and go back to one hundred million. Okay, let's get back to this value. Okay, and we want to improve the performance. We want to make it uh, better. On your laptop, maybe it's worse also. You want to use 100 million. Your laptop, maybe when you try, your result is worse. There's a reason why it's worse. It's worse not because of the program that is bad or is wrong. Your, your answer is fine. The problem is the processor. The processor is has some kind of issue. Okay, and the issue is four channel. Let's let's talk about four channel. This is uh, what we're going to look at is part B actually. This one. No part B. The solution is very simple. Use two dimensional array instead of one dimension. Remember our partial sum, I don't use sum, we call partial sum, right? Our partial sum is single uh, dimension. But here we put two dimension and then we sort using two dimension, we find the performance actually increase dramatically. They okay? increase about five times faster. Five more times faster. That means all overall it will be about, about 14 to 15 times faster. Okay? At the moment, I think it's about uh, four times faster. Okay? So uh, what is the problem? Let's look at the processor. We've got processor there. And inside this processor we've got multiple cores. And we also have cache. And we have multiple cache there. We've got one level one, level two, level three. Now let's not draw the level three cache. The rest of the cache is there. Whatever applies to this level three applies to the rest of the cache as well. Right? And what is the reason why we have cache in the first place? So we've got our double down here. Okay. Why do we need a cache? And what is the role of this cache? Memory cache. What is the role of this cache? Store temporary what? What do you store in there, temporary? You learned this before, right? What, what, what do you store? What is the role of this cache? It actually store temporary, frequently used data, right? Okay, why do you need to store temporary, frequently used data inside the cache? Why do you need to store it? Okay, there are multiple reasons. The first reason here is this memory is slow. The second thing is, the data transport to and fro is also slow. Okay, because of the speed of light, speed, the uh, speed of light is finite. You can, the speed of light can travel around the world seven times in one second. Okay? And to this processor running at one gigahertz, the, in one second, the speed of light, the light travel only this much, five centimeters in one nanosecond. One nanosecond, if you are running at one gigahertz, one nanosecond, you can run one instruction. Okay? And of course, your, your processor is maybe running faster than that, okay? Maybe if let's say it's 3 gigahertz or 3 point something gigahertz, it is much faster than 1 nanosecond, in picosecond, okay? So basically, you can run multiple instructions. You can run multiple instructions. The light only travels this much, in okay? Now imagine, okay, why, why do I talk about light? It's because everything that we know cannot travel faster than speed of light. Okay? This is according to Einstein's theory. It says that you cannot travel at the speed of light unless you are in another dimension. Okay? If you are in another dimension, you can travel faster than that. But you are in this dimension, you cannot travel faster than speed of light. And the electricity actually runs 66% of the speed of light. Okay? 
and your memory is actually not very close by your processor. You open up the motherboard, it's actually quite far apart. Maybe it takes several nanoseconds okay, to travel back and forth. So that is the physical limit. Okay? But that is not the worst one. The worst one is actually your memory. Your memory takes, at the moment, it takes maybe maybe less than 100 nanoseconds, maybe uh, 50 nanoseconds. Okay, the past maybe is about 100 nanoseconds. So imagine that your processor runs on one gigahertz, but you have to wait, and then you have to, we have a, a te slow technology here, and therefore, your processor is not running at the full speed, you know, because it has to wait all the time, right? If I want to read the instruction, I have to wait. If I want to read the data, I have to wait. So basically, I have to wait all the time. Even though I run at the uh, uh, 10 gigahertz, if I want to wait for the VRAM, that means I will not run as fast as one gigahertz. No, no difference there, right? Okay, now to improve the speed, they create the level uh, cache. This cache, mm -hmm. one thing is very near to the core. It's about micrometer, okay, or in millimeter. Most of the time it's in micrometer. Okay, maybe in millimeter. But the, the level one is in micrometer, okay? They also, I think, it's in micrometer as well, right? So in micrometer, that means the physical limit of, uh, of this uh, transportation of the signal is not an issue. The only issue maybe is the technology, but this technology that is used to create this RAM is much better than this, it's faster. So this one is about maybe 25 nanoseconds. Level one, sorry, level two is maybe half of that. Level one run as, as at the speed of this uh, processor. If the processor is three gigahertz, it also run at three gigahertz. But of course, the, the size is also very small, right? Now, because it run at very fast speed, that means the processor can fetch from very fast speed. Right? It can run at the speed, okay? But eventually, you will have to get it from the outside also. So if let's say you have to access the data from outside, isn't it going to be slow also? No. They use a technique called paging, or uh, sorry, uh, uh, cache web. Here is one cache web. Size. So uh, you read one cache line size of data into the cache. Okay? And how does it speed up? If let's say the core wants only one byte, one byte here. Okay? The processor will not read one byte, it will read one line. Okay, one line in here is 64 bit. For this processor, it's 64 bit. Of course, our, pro our model processor, I think, is bigger than that. Here is 64 bit. Even though you read one byte, one byte is 8 bit, but the processor will read 64 bit at a time. Okay, it doesn't read only one byte, it reads 64 bit at one time. Okay, what does it hope to do? So, if let's say this data is already inside there, now if the processor access the second byte, that will be cache key. Right? Cache means is bad, isn't it? Cache means means is it in level one? No, it's not in level one. Is it in level two? No, it's not in level two. So you go to level three. Is it in level three? No, it's not in level three. So you have to go and grab it from outside. So that is cash miss. Okay, cash miss, we don't want. Because it's bad, it's slow. Okay, once it's already inside you because you read one, one, one line, right? And because it's inside here, and you will be inside in, uh, level two, you will also be in level one. Okay? Because just now it was miss, 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 and then you grab from outside, you store, you store, you store. Now, when the call access the second part, this time it will be cache hit. Now, cache hit is good because you don't have to break. It's already inside the cache. And this cache runs as fast as the processor. So it will, it will run at the speed of the processor. Is it right? Okay? And if you increase the size here, that means you will have more cache hit. You have first cache miss one time, after that you got multiple cache hit. Now the ratio between hit and miss 
is the one that is important. So if the hit uh, uh, hit miss ratio is high, if this one this result is high, hit is more than miss, then we have got performance gain there. Right? If you got more miss than hit, that means your performance is going to be bad because every time you have to get it from the slow end. Right? And the engineer, they actually already do some study. They start to see, find out. If they read one page like this, is it going to have high heat? That means, yes, they found out that is the case. Why? Because when you read the first part, not only you read the second part. When you do operation, you process the first part, you process the second part, you process the third part. Okay? So you're going to touch the subsequent part. Okay, so the processor actually will read all of this in advance, one time, and that was cache miss, which is fine, because later on when you access the same with, uh, the data next to it, you will come from the cache, so it will be fast, because there will be a lot of cache in data, right? For example, when you run the instruction, you run the first instruction, the second instruction is next to it in right? So, when the processor read, you read one whole cache line, multiple instruction, so when you read the first instruction, maybe it's cache miss, but the second, third, fourth, it will be all cache hit. Right? The same for data. When you read the right data, when you read the, uh, the first byte, most probably the next loop, you will touch the second byte. Right? So the second byte and so on and so forth, you will cache it. So uh, the ratio here is going to be high, and therefore your performance will be, even though your external RAM is slow. Okay, so that is the reason for this cache. Now, because of this cache, we have a problem. This track here that you see, uh, it cannot share the same line, this cache line here, this cache line that you right? Um, if, if, if you can share, the only problem is that they have to wait for one another. If let's say track one wants to use the data in some way, right? And then track two want to access the data next to it. Although they are two different data, but they live in the same cache line because they are close to one another. Uh, track two has to wait for track one. It has to wait for track one to finish, then only you can access. The same thing, if track, track, track three want to, to take the data on the third byte, we also have to wait for track two to finish. So only one person can actually access it. So they are waiting for one another. And that waiting is called more sharing because you are not sharing. You are not sharing the same data. You are sharing the same line. And that sharing of the same line causes the track to run slow. And the reason why your program runs slower than it should is because of this problem. Why? Because remember, we have this uh, partial sum. In our partial sum, we've got uh, total tracks of element, right? Then this double, and this shared, and if you look pictorially, it looks like this. It is uh, element 0, element 1, element 2, element 15, and your track is going to use, track ID number 0 is going to use this element, track ID number 1 is going to use element number 1, track number 2 is going to use it. So when they do partial sum, we're going to sum and then put inside here, because these are separate copies of element and the way they sum, they are not going to uh, share right? you won't know this is a shared variable okay? this partial sum array is shared but the way we access and update this element they are not shared right? Okay, they are not shared okay, this, these are not shared right? but then if you look at the position they are next to one another. And this, the whole thing here can be wrapped in as one cache one. Now you have multiple tracks, they are assessing next to one another. And they all have to wait for one another. And that's why they slow down. Okay, so how do we overcome this? We overcome this by not putting the variable close together. We separate them further away. Okay, how do we do it? We do it this way. We create a two-dimension array. 
initially here we, do, we use one dimension, right? Right now we create two dimensions. So two dimension will be something like this. So here will be uh, here will be the M tracks, total tracks, good, total tracks here. The size here is total tracks. And then in our case it's 16, 16 row. And here is, uh, it says here uh, we need one cache line is 64 bit, right? So in my right it should be 8 bytes, but to be safe, I put 64. Yeah, I want to put 64. Actually, actually uh, 64 bit is good enough, which is still right. It is good enough, you can try. But uh, in my, in my uh, exercise that I do, I put 64. Okay, actually it's more than 64 bytes. Okay? So why, why do I do this? Because if I do this, right now my data is here is zero, index zero, index one, sorry, column zero, column one, column two, column sixty-two. This is row zero, row one, row two, row sixteen. Sorry, row fifteen. Because we've got sixteen tracks. Sixty-four uh, uh bytes. Okay. And where do we put our data? We put our data here. I put my data in. Okay? Because when when the uh, the processor read one cache line, right? You read this. You read it to here. Okay? Now the, the the data is there. Now the second the second um, the variable, the second variable, is right over here. And when you read the cache, you read this next cache here. And this cache and that cache is two different cache lines. And if track one use this, track two use this, track three use this, they are not sharing. Okay? So it looks like at the bottom here. Now all these tracks will be able to use this cache line at the same time. They are not waiting for one another and then run faster. You get it? Okay? So that's the whole idea. So we, that's why we create, instead of one dimension, we have to create two dimensions. How do we create it? So we're going to create it like this. Uh, we call it double steel. Uh, we call it partial sum steel. But this time, it is two dimensions. Here is total tracks. But here is 64, because I, I, I want it to be 64. Okay, you can try it. Okay, you can try any other number, but don't put it smaller than 8 bytes. Okay, so uh, I put 64 bytes. Here, here is bits, uh, for 64 bits it means 8 bytes. But here I put 64. Now, since I've got two dimensions, and I know that it's going to solve the problem, but how do I initialize it? Okay, I suggest don't put 0 at the back, because if you put 0 at the back, you only initialize the first element. The rest of the element will not initialize. And we don't have to worry about this element. We only worry about the, uh, the, the column zero element. Okay? Because we only use column zero. We don't use any other other uh, elements. Okay? These are all wasted. Alright? So how do we how do we initialize it? We initialize this way. After you define it, you just put a for loop. Okay? And then here you just Initialize the first one. Here will be the I. I will be inside that. And then here is zero. Zero is the first column. Okay, initialize the zero. Now, do you need to initialize the rest? You can, but it's a waste of time because you're not going to use it. You only use the column zero. The column zero is corresponding to this. Alright? Is that clear? You want to initialize all these to zero, so can, but you don't need it. Because we don't need and the reason why we put it this way is because this is one cache line. We hope that it is uh, big enough to be one cache line. If it is bigger than one cache line, it's even better, right? But of course, it waste memory. But we must make sure that it's long enough. Okay, one cache line only is eight, eight bytes. Here, I created sixty-four bytes, so I got more than enough. So when you read, there will be one cache line. Okay. Now when you read the second one, it will be another cache line. So this thread is going to use different cache line and they are not going to have force sharing. Without force sharing, 
you get a better result. So let's see the, the result. Let's see the result. I already done it, so I know that it's going to be better solution. Is this one? Okay, just ignore this one first because I'll explain to you what, why why I put already more one more two. The more important one is this. Okay, I make some changes here to make uh, uh, to make our um, comparison much uh, much more efficient. Okay, so this is single. This one is what we have done before without with uh, four sharing. I don't eliminate my four sharing. Okay, we use partial sum, single dimension. Okay, and we have four sharing problem. And right now, this one, I already solved the problem. Right now, I don't want you to do it. But here, I want to show you the result. Okay? Uh, I, I changed from single dimension to two dimension. Okay, and I initialize it to zero, like this. Okay? All right. And if you run the result, you see the result. Okay, the result is better. Is about five times faster. Okay. What did I change? In the second result, I only changed to two dimension, from single dimension to two dimension. And of course, I think need to initialize this. I need to change some code here because right now it's two dimension instead of one dimension. And just because of that change in me, I get five times faster, about five times faster. So let's see uh, how many times faster because. You can use calculator and calculate. I don't want to use calculator. I want to use computer to, to calculate for me. So it will return the time taken. This guy also will return the time taken. And with that time, I can compute the performance gain against the original. So the modified, I'm sorry, this one is not yet there. The modified one is a single, uh, sorry, a one dimensional partial sum. Okay, that is the four sharing. The result is mod one, and I compare the original. This will be the performance gains for that. This one is after I have changed it to uh, two dimension, so I overcome the four sharing. Okay, the result will be here, and then I compute the performance gain. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, so you can see. Um, Without, without the improvement, this is with four sharing. It's about three times faster compared to the original. But if I make this change, it's about 15 times, 15.5 times faster than the original. So I suspect this, this processor has 16 cores. Okay? Because I instantiate 16 threads. Most probably it has 16 cores because if I don't have 16 cores, I cannot get close to 16, right? Okay, so I know now we know that our core, the number of cores here is at least 16 cores in the processor. Okay, we have 16 cores there. That's why we get this kind of performance. Uh, it, it does not need to be 16 cores. Uh, it is Intel because Intel has hyper threading. In hyper threading, you can have multiple threads that is running in a single core. But uh, here we get the, this kind of result. It means that um, with this change, actually it has a lot of improvement. Okay? What I'm running here is 100 million steps. Eh? If you use a uh, 1,000 step or 10 million step, then you will see the, uh, the result different. If you use a laptop, it will be different as well. But if you use this computer, just like me, then you see more as the same result. Okay? You will the second time you see <coughs> kind of similar result. Okay, 15 times here as well. 15 for 5. And the other one is about 4 times faster. Okay, okay so what I need you to do now, uh, firstly you need to make sure that your part B is done. Eh? Sorry, uh, part A is done. If your part A is not done, you cannot do part B because part B depends on part A. That means it depends on the second result. Okay? The second result needs to be correct first because your third solution is actually changing from a single uh, one dimension to two dimension. That's all that you need to do. Okay, that means 
your second solution must be correct first before you do the uh, start okay? Now, you try now, and let me see if you can get this answer. After that, we move on to the next part. The next part is we want to uh, improve the ex uh, programming experience. We want to simplify it so that we have better programming experience, but we still get the same result as this last one. Okay? Now we do this one first, and let me see if we do it together. Now this one is important, huh? we need to know how to do it, because uh, later on when we learn MPI and we learn MGPU, we need to know this concept. We have to re revisit this concept again. Okay? So if you are good in this already, then it's easier for you to solve MPI problem and GPU problem. Okay? Okay, try now. I'll give you some time to do and then show me your result. Okay, make sure that you run 100 million times so that it's comparable with me. Otherwise, uh, your result will be different for me and then you start questioning why your result looks different, the performance also different. Copy and paste, call it multi tool or whatever, and then make this change. Make this change from single uh, array to uh, two dimensional array. Okay. Uh, you can try it. Let's try it. Let's make sure that mm -hmm. it will be, will be good or not. I'm not sure. You can try it if you want to. Part B, yeah, if, you, uh, if you are still wondering which part that to do. Part B. Question to part B. Anyone already modified? Actually, it's quite simple. You just need to modify and then so that you initialize the, uh, the first row. You just need to initialize the first row to zero. Okay. Make sure that it's all zero because if you don't start with zero, it's any random number. And when you do partial sum, you get the wrong answer. So you need to initialize all these zeros. The first row, sorry, the first column. Okay? The other columns you don't have to touch because you're not going to use it. Okay? You're only using the first column. Alright? Thank you. 
Done? Anyone done? 